Dear Diary, The first and last time I visited the Norton Simon Museum in Pasadena was in 2017 when I crashed a friend's college field trip. I think it's worth mentioning that at the time I had no confidence or aspiration to attend college, let alone a university. I could not remember the last time I have been to a museum any time before COVID and have not been to one since then, until my visit back to the Norton Simon Museum recently. Back in March, I had a seizure which resulted in my license being suspended. Finally, after months of feeling like I had no independence, trapped, and feeling like an overall burden to others in order to get around, my neurologist said it is now safe for me to drive. This assignment could not have come at a better time. Although I tend to get a bit intimidated by any sort of assignment that involves recording myself in any way, this assignment allowed me to experience one of the best days I have had in a long time. Being able to have a day to myself for the first time, even before the seizure, tune everything out and just absorb all the amazing artwork from different centuries before us that surrounded me was something that I really needed. Among all the pieces I got to see during my visit at the museum, the two that stood out the most to me were Edgar Degas' Little Dancer, age 14, and Vincent van Gogh's Winter, the Victorious Garden Under Snow. I find that both artworks have their own unique cultural significance to help enhance our comprehension of the world around us. Edgar Degas was a 19th century impressionist from artist from France. His works consisted of painting, sculptures, and printmaking. Degas' most famous sculpture, and perhaps the most famous sculpture of the 19th century, is Little Dancer, age 14, which he sculpted in the year of 1878 and has been bronze casted since then after 1936. According to the Norton Simon Art Foundation, the original wax model of the little 14-year-old dancer was exhibited in the Sixth Impressionist ex Exhibition of April 1881, presenting the Parisian public with an extraordinary new conception of sculpture. It is also stated that accustomed to representations that idealized human forms, the public had mixed reactions to the graphic portrayal of an adolescent dance student dressed in real clothing. The Little Dancer was also the only sculpture Degas exhibited publicly throughout his existence. Degas sparked mixed controversy with the sculpture for his use of unorthodox elements to bring it to life. As stated in an article by National Gallery of Art, art critic Elia DeMont was flabbergasted. I don't ask that art should always be elegant, but I don't believe that its role is to champion the cause of ugliness. The diminutive figure, the only sculpture Degas exhibited publicly, was described variously as repulsive, vicious, and a threat to society. To sculpt the little dancer, Degas used beeswax. The beeswax was even tinted to look like human skin. Degas dressed the sculpture in actual clothing, including a bodice made of cotton, ballerina linen shoes, and a cotton and silk tutu. The little dancer's hair was also a wig made of human hair and is tied in a silk and linen ribbon. While at the Norton Simon Museum, I learned that the elements were layered with more wax in order to combine them with the rest of the piece and to also preserve the look of the clothing. The Metropolitan Museum of Art mentions in an article in regards to the little dancer that the only sculpture he exhibited during his lifetime, it was both hailed and criticized for its uncanny realism. It was amazing getting to see the little dancer in person especially having learned about it during my time at community college. I had no idea that it was going to be in the exhibit, so I honestly felt kind of like I bumped into a celebrity that day. Being able to be in the same room and so close to a work of art in history was so much more impactful than having only seen it in PowerPoints for the past couple of years. A meaning I derived from Edgar Degas' Little Dancer, age 14, 
is that we tend to either ignore or completely forget about the hardship and pain that goes into things that are supposed to be beautiful and have structure. CNN journalist Julia Fiore states in an article that while it's possible to admire Degas dancers for, from a formal standpoint, this narrow appreciation ignores the abuse these sorry girls suffered. A close look at the, these works shows how the painter did indeed cut through the ballet's kitschy artifice, uncovering a milieu of misery, hardship, and raw beauty. The little dancer holds such cultural significance because it is able to bring understanding to what we know as standard beauty expectations from the past and even now and completely obliterate it. Obliterating it to a sense that its radical elements of composition and the controversy it caused makes us take a deeper look into the raw beauty of trying to succeed those expectations. It is also really culturally significant because Edgar Degas used use of unorthodox elements was progressive and opened the creative doors for artists to use really any material to make art. Another artwork I want to talk about that stood out to me at Norton Simon was D was Dutch painter Vincent van Gogh's 1885 oil painting, Winter, the Visseraj Garden Under Snow. When I think of Vincent van Gogh, I immediately think of A Starry Night and other paintings with blues, bright colors, and his significant brush and his signature brush strokes such as his self-portraits, bedroom in Arles, and cafe terrace at night. Coming across this painting, I was instantly drawn to its subject matter of abrupt brush strokes and use of darker and more mute shades of color such as brown, gray, blue, red, and green. We can see the blending of the darker colors and the way they are manipulated by the white lines and use of white in the brush strokes to make gloomy to make a gloomy sky dead trees and walls of the premise this was my first time ever seeing this painting and i was honestly surprised when i learned that it was by van gogh because it is more grim than the other works i have mentioned although i was not able to find much research about this painting, I find it very interesting that the little information I did find solidified my thoughts on this piece. According to the Norton Simon Art Foundation, we see in Van Gogh's painting, this view across the visitor's garden, a lone figure clears a path, though the leafless bushes or perhaps markers at left give us pause. Is this man shoveling snow or is he digging a grave? The location for this painting was at a Dutch church where his father was a Protestant minister. So this may give the idea that the figure might be digging a grave. However, not knowing this painting existed or the history behind it and Van Gogh's life, I was wondering the same while at the museum. Wondering to myself, oh, he's shoveling snow in his yard. Wait, is it a grave? Is he at a cemetery? A meaning I managed to derive from Vincent Van Gogh's Winter the Visceridge Garden Under Snow through its composition and my own perception is that nothing is lucid. Many, including myself, might just see a man simply sho shoveling snow, but if you actually stop to take a closer look, these abrupt, rugged brush strokes are large trees with green and life to the left, and what appears to be an early morning sky to the right with towering winter branches outside of the walls of the premise. While the leaves, while the trees and branches inside are dead, dark, sharp, and leafless. 
There is also a shape in the center of the painting between two trees to the left of the man that kind of looks like a tombstone. However, that is not a fact. Although there is a significant difference from either side of the wall that may signify life and death, the painting shows that life has darkness too. To the far right of the painting, we can see an entrance or, ex or, or exit but it is gated. Is it locked? The derived meaning of nothing is lucid also fractures the debate of trying to, of whether or not the man is shoveling snow or digging a grave by having me wonder, what if he is trying to get to the other side of the wall by digging? Perhaps wanting to escape confinement and wanting something better. The cultural significance of Van Gogh's winter is its ability to enrich our understandings of the world around us is not lucid. It is, n n it is not simply black and white or life and death. It is everything in between. Both Edgar Degas and Vincent van Gogh were able to capture cultural significance and deeper understandings of life with their individually unique artworks. Degas was able to obliterate the standard of beauty expectations by using unorthodox elements and spotlight hardship and raw beauty, whereas Van Gogh was able to capture those to channel empathy and understandings of what people may be going through in their life. Between my afternoon at Norton Simon and writing about all of this to you, it is quite coincidental, coincidental that I, that what I took from The Little Dancer in Winter relates to how I've been feeling the past months. I'm very appreciative for the understanding, perspective, clarity, and open-mindedness that these pieces have allowed me to experience and incorporate into my thoughts on life. Like I said before, this assignment has not come at a better time, and I cannot wait to go back to the museum and write to you about it. Amanda.